the Constitution really places a wager on the American people. At the end of the day, by <coughs> requiring a supermajority vote in the Senate, in particular, to, to, uh, for an impeachment to succeed, the Constitution basically gambles that in the face of presidential wrongdoing that genuinely menaces democracy, the American people will overcome polarization and inertia and partisanship and all of the other forces that can prevent political consensus from forming uh, and will rally against the leader who's gone off the rails and threatens the entire undertaking. And, and sorry, just with one last point there is, you know, we live in a time now where I think a lot of people would agree that our political system is broken in some ways. And so in precise distinction from the Nixon case, where there was a coming together of, of, polit of politicians of goodwill from different parties, uh, obviously with different worldviews and different incentives, but they came together in an effort uh, to sort of save the country from a threat. One question we now face is whether it's really plausible to imagine that the partisan divide could be bridged. And I think when you refer in your article to senior Democrats expressing reluctance to lead with impeachment talk and to, tra you know, to travel the country saying that no matter what happens, we're gonna vote for impeachment, what they understand and what some people like Mr. Steyer don't understand is that an impeachment can't be taken seriously and it will not succeed and it will not have legitimacy if it looks like one party has decided at the outset that there's only one outcome it can live with and that's the removal of the president. It needs to be a process that brings the, na the people of the nation of all viewpoints together to make a decision about this. Uh, okay, but a different way of, of looking at what you're saying is if, and let's, you know, let's not be coy, let's, let's start to let label things. I mean, if the Republican Party today which is a much more conservative party than the one you were dealing with in the mid-70s in, in Washington, if, if they can, what you are saying is if they can hold together as they are holding together now, they can, issue, they can, execute, they can um, exercise a veto over impeachment regardless of what the evidence is. Is that a good thing? It's not a good thing, but we might as well face reality. It seems to me, there are so many differences between where we are now and where we were in the Nixon years. I mean, Nixon's policies would have made him a little to the left of today's Democratic Party. He created the Environmental Protection Agency, food stamps, everything. And on top of that, he had a sense of shame. So it was possible for someone like Goldwater to come to him and say, Dick, the jig is up. And he didn't want to be humiliated with a trial, even if he thought maybe he could just squeak by. Today, I think it's clear, if we're going to be open about it, that Trump would like nothing better than to wallow in the mud of an impeachment trial and be front and center every minute. And then, when the 67 votes aren't there to remove him, he would say, you see, no collusion, no obstruction. He would be empowered even more. What I think ultimately is that in this situation of broken politics, if there were anything remotely approaching the vote that it would take to remove the president, we should look at alternatives. I mean, if, for example, the Democrats just barely control the Senate and do well in the House, then there would be the votes to have a massive investigation, to have the subpoena power, to use the power of the purse, all sorts of ways of constraining the president and protecting the constitutional system so that even if in today's era of really dysfunctional and broken politics, impeachment becomes a device that is not off the table but extremely unlikely to succeed, it doesn't mean that the system is totally without defenses. I mean, I often encounter people who say, can't you give us some hope? Isn't there anything that can be done? There are plenty of things that can be done. When you look at the Me Too movement, when you look at the kids from Parkland, when you look at the uprising and the increased political engagement, we're building from the ground up. But the fact that this tool may be a sword of Damocles that hangs and never really drops successfully, that in itself shouldn't make us give up on the democratic project. Well, well, well let's turn, I, let me, to, let please, me just Liz, go ahead. respond to that. One is 
that yes, there are alternative ways of checking a president, but remember the president has a veto power. So legislation, mm -hmm. he can block legislation by having one third plus one of the votes. Right. I remember how we tried to stop the war in Vietnam. And fi finally we did stop the bombing of Cambodia, but he was able, basically, because he had one third uh, plus one vote to, keep, to, to push that off for three or four months. So the bombing continued against the will of a majority. So can it work to some extent, but it's not a fail safe. And I also want to go back to impeachment. Somehow everybody thinks we're start impeachment and it's over. You go to a trial, it's, it's, it's you know, you're there uh, sitting in front of the TV or computer or whatever, and that's it. Impeachment started with the Saturday Night Massacre in October. We had of counsel. 73. 73. We didn't have counsel in place till December because the Democrats, to try to make it bipartisan, picked a Republican counsel, and the Republicans picked a Republican counsel. Took a while to get that done. But then the process started. Nobody at the outset, I just want to emphasize this, knew where it was going to end up. Nobody said, oh, we're going to get Nixon. We know the charges. We're sitting down now. We're writing it up. It's all perfunctory, rubber stamp, finished. We didn't know what the charges would be. We didn't know what the facts were going to be. We knew he had fired the special prosecutor. We knew that was an obstruction, but really, what would the Constitution say about it? So I think for the Democrats to, to say, oh, this is off the table. We can't have impeachment. Who knows where a process that's a serious process goes? It's like a jury trial. We didn't know what the Senate was going to do. We didn't know what the House vote was, the Judiciary Committee vote was going to be when we started this process. Nobody did a head count. I know it's impossible to believe that that could yeah. happen today. Nobody did a head count. It was like going to court with a jury trial and a jury trial, and you have your facts together, you pull the law together, and you present a case. And you hope it's a strong case. Could I just now, say why I so strongly agree, agree okay. with that? When this all began, we had the firing of Comey. We had indications of work with Russia. Nobody knew at the time about ZTE, a dangerous telecom giant in which China has a major investment. Nobody knew that Trump would be getting an infusion of half a billion dollars from China and that his daughter would be getting 17 really valuable trademarks just coincidentally days before Trump gives ZTE a waiver from the sanctions voted by Congress. It might turn out that when all of those dots are collected and exposed and the evidence emerges that there is out and out bribery not just a violation of the Emoluments Clause, serious though that is, but bribery, one of the named offenses even before you get to high crimes and misdemeanors. And one of the points of our book is these processes unfold over time. It's not a snapshot, it's a movie. And how the president reacts is part of the unfolding movie. Let, uh, I, and, and that's why it seems, I just want to put this point on it, that's why it seems to me so important that, a pro that nobody fear a fair process, neither the Republicans nor the Democrats. But if you don't have a fair process, then everybody should fear it. Well, just, just, Let, I'm sorry, but you know, okay. in the spirit of my co-panelists. No, that's right, yes, please. You know, I, I, in thinking about what a fair process looks like, this is one of the sort of deep questions that the Democratic Party is now facing. Is, you know, will the people of the country think the process is fair? If a very large number of the future j prosecutors and judges say at the very beginning, our goal here is impeachment. So it's not a question of anyone saying impeachment's off the table. We'll never do it. But, that's, but there, is, it, there is something to be said for saying we don't know where this is going to go. There are a lot of risks associated with impeachment. And what we want to focus on are the very questions, Liz, that you identified. And when there, there's a real harm, I think, that when impeachment talk surges and overtakes political discourse at the very beginning of this process, and there's a perception on the part of the people who currently support the president, and the 60% of the American public that currently does not support impeachment, when there's a perception among those folks that the game is rigged, that this was all about aiming toward a foreordained conclusion, it's hard to generate the legitimacy that you're describing.